Have you ever played a game where the enemies feel so alive that you have to stop and wonder if it's really a computer controlling them? Because for me, when I first played Rain World, I found it absolutely fascinating how the other creatures interacted with not only the player, but their environment and the other creatures too. That's why for the past few months I've been aiming to create intelligent AI and a lively ecosystem for my game. Here's how that went. Right, so back at the end of the last video, I briefly mentioned how I'd have to implement my own pathfinding algorithm, and there was a good reason for that. You see, ideally I could use something like A star or Dijkstra's, but those both came with a few problems. Firstly, what the f does this mean? But more importantly, it relies on a finite set of nodes, typically in a grid. This is fine for most cases, but since my world is infinite, this would mean recalculating the mesh around the player every set interval. I did try it a while ago, but it was really annoying and caused major lag spikes every few seconds. I'm sure there are other methods that would work fine, but I decided it would be fun to make my own algorithm, and to be fair it kind of was. To put it simply, it relies mostly on physics rather than maths, sending out ray casts instead of comparing distances, and very surprisingly it only took me like 2 or 3 days to make. Just don't ask me to explain it because, uh, most of it just miraculously worked. Yo, how does this work? What the f- The real time consuming bit was the AI, but I was more in the mood to have some actual animals rather than this white circle I'd been using. Thankfully I already had a squirrel and bunny from about a year ago, but I wanted to have a few more things, and oh my god I hate drawing animals now. Each one of them was a complete nuisance to make. All I can say is that I'm very glad animals don't look like this in real life. After a few days of tweaking them though, they actually turned out really well, so it was time to bring them to life. Obviously I wanted to make the AI good, but what makes an AI good depends on what you're aiming for. I mean, if you're playing a simple platformer like Mario, you probably don't want massive coordinated groups of Koopas hunting you down with snipers. Most games like mine would just have basic logic for, you know, spawning things in, walking around a bit, and then either dying or despawning, but I wanted something a bit more interesting. My main requirement was for all the animals to work entirely independently of the player and to have lives that could be observed in real time, even if no one's gonna notice. But how on earth would I do that? Yeah, I have no idea. But after looking into it a bit and asking ChatGPT a few things, it seemed like there were three main options. Finite state machines, behaviour trees, or goal-oriented action planning. No, I don't know what any of those names mean either. Long story short, I decided on this overly complicated hybrid behaviour tree kind of plan system. It relies on a few different types of nodes, which could be either action nodes, composite nodes, conditional nodes, or decorator nodes. But you don't really need to know what any of that means. Basically, it just runs through a bunch of checks to decide what task to assign each entity. The editor you see on screen looks really hard to make, and well actually it was, but thankfully the Kiwi Coder on YouTube has this really helpful two part series on Unity's GraphView API, so all I had to do was actually adapt it to my own needs and customise it a bit. If I wanted to rely solely on behaviour trees though, they'd probably end up looking like a plate of spaghetti, and I already had one of those, so I didn't need a second. That's where the task system came in. I don't want to bore you too much with the technical stuff, but to put it simply, I have each of these tasks defined as a series of simple instructions called steps, which would be something like pathfind to x, locate y, or pick up z. Each one either performs an action, recalls info from a previous step, or stores something new into the brain. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I gave them memory too, for some reason. You can probably see now why this video took like 4 months. Getting the whole thing working was an absolute nightmare. I mean, like one time I literally spent two whole afternoons debugging these strange behaviours only to find that it was because of an incorrect if statement somewhere. It just so happened that that one if statement was the thing that prevented them from doing multiple tasks at once. In all my debugging, I decided it would be best to make custom inspectors for a few things which led me down a massive rabbit hole of making other custom editors. But to help further with understanding what the f*** they were doing, I added these thought bubbles above their heads indicating the current goal. If they look a bit too distracting though, I will probably add a way to turn them off. 
Another thing that was causing a lot of problems was that my 3D coordinates have always actually been really inaccurate. I could just never be bothered fixing it. After spending way too long fixing that though, a lot of the problems were actually solved, and with a single entity type more or less working, I decided to test the performance. To my surprise, it actually wasn't that bad, I could maintain a steady 80 or 90 FPS with 100 or so squirrels, but that was on a low resolution and there was definitely plenty of room for improvement, so I spent about a week improving my entire game's performance, and it definitely worked. I won't go into the details here, but I'll leave a list of changes in the description if you're interested. I was however still missing the combat, and that's basically the whole reason I was adding in animals in the first place. But it was around this time that I competed in Ludum Dare. I'd recommend you to check that video out afterwards if you haven't already, but editing that took quite a while and I did have to do some study for exams. After a few weeks though I was back in business. Attacking right now is basically just swinging your sword and dealing damage, and it uses the same animation as the pickaxe, but oh well. I do plan to add more intricate combat systems after the demo, perhaps with randomised loot, ranged weapons, mage weapons and so on, but for now it's just swords because I cannot be bothered. Next anyway, I made these fancy health bars, which was actually surprisingly complicated. For the main sprite, I pretty much just copied the one from Terraria since I really liked the look of it, but for the colouring, I don't know how most games do it, but without going too much into colour theory, Simply tinting the black and white sprite looks terrible, so instead I used colour swapping to one of 5 red, yellow and green gradients. But colour swapping requires shaders, and my old lighting shaders were weird as hell to work with. I spent a few days messing around with UV stuff and moving the lighting into a function in an external file, and then got the health bar shader itself working. Oh! But killing the animals still did nothing. So with my newfound knowledge of and love for shaders, I figured it would be fun to make this satisfying dissolve effect on death, and it actually helped a lot with the game's feel. I did need a few more things to kill though since murdering squirrels seems a bit mean, so I got the other animals implemented and drew up this slime which will be the main enemy for now. To polish it all off I added some particles, loot on death, fixed a lot of null reference exceptions and so on and after 4 extremely long months, the animals were actually done. Don't worry though, the next video should be much quicker to make. I'll be focusing on saving and loading, as well as the main menu, and for that I'll need your help. If you have any name suggestions for the game's title, feel free to suggest them here or in the Discord. I will be putting out a community post in a few hours detailing any requirements and preferences for it, but if you have any initial ideas, they would be much appreciated. Subscribing would of course be appreciated too, but that's it for today. See you all in the next one.